After a long time, when the Reaper regained consciousness, he found himself on a terrible battlefield. The swords clashed with each other and made a clanging sound. On one side, cheers of joy were ringing. Along with them, thousands of voices chanted, Long live the great Pandian king! Down with the Pandian enemies! They chanted. On the other side thousands of voices shouted, King Gunga has fallen! Run! Run! Some voices were heard stopping the runners. Then suddenly there was silence on the battlefield for a moment. The Reaper looked around. Vijayalaya Chola, who had lost both his legs, was carried on his shoulders by another tall Ajanu Bagu man. He who was sitting on his shoulders was carrying two giant swords in both hands. Chola warriors! Halt! Paul Avas! Do not run! Die by six! Die by a hundred! Follow me! Let us cut the enemy to shreds! He exclaimed. The Chola Balava soldiers who had started running saw Vijayalaya Chola and stopped after listening to his words. Fatigue and panic disappeared from their faces and courage and bravery appeared again. Then the buyers started moving forward. Pavyuvatarayar again saw Vijayalaya Chola who was responsible for this miraculous transformation. He also saw the warrior who was carrying him on his shoulders. Miracle! Miracle! He saw that he was the hero who stood thus. The Palyavetare charged into the enemy, holding the legless Vijayalaya Chola on his shoulder with one hand and swinging a long knife in the other hand. Wherever the two of them went, the heads of the Pandya warriors rolled to the ground. The situation of war has changed radically. Pandyanism was scattered. Cholas and Palavas won. The cheers rang out in a tremulous manner. Vijayalaya Chola sat in front of the Pallava Emperor. Next to him stood the Reaper. The Pallava Emperor looked at the Chola King and said, O oh brave warrior! Today, defeat has become victory for you. The Chola country is now a free country. You and your valiant son Adatan and your descendants will rule the Chola country as free kings forever. Said. Immediately, Vijayalaya Chola looked at Palyavatare who was standing near him and said, that's it. It is because of them that we got this victory. I appoint you as the general and general of the independent Chola country. Your descendants will also be generals and generals as long as they are true to the Chola clan. Said. Suddenly there was a look of fierce anger on that face. The old reaper saw this new reaper. O oh sinner! Traitor! Sandal! You axe wielder who has come to destroy my clan! You have ruined all the wonderful heroic fame accumulated by six generations? You have committed betrayal of friendship and master? You have given room to the hereditary enemies of the Chola clan in your house? Have you given material from your treasure? Not because of you, but today the Chola clan will end. Time is running out. The amount of blame in the world will never change. He cursed. Tears welled up in the eyes of the cursed punisher. Then came many other cultivators. Each one recounted his heroic deeds. Everyone cursed the scoundrel. Then they all cursed together. Chandala! You have committed treason and treason? You have ruined all the heroic fame we have earned by giving our lives. Why has your intellect gone like this? They said. The vandals disappeared. The Velirs of Kajumbalar and the Malay Amans of Thirukovalar came. They surrounded the lone reaper. She she. Are you human too? You boasted that you and your lineage have supported the Chola clan? What are you saying now? Have you become Yama to the Chola clan? Badaka. Where is your Pavishu? They trumpeted and laughed. The Chola people standing in a crowd behind them began to throw stones and earth at the reapers. At that time Emperor Sundara Chola moved away from the crowd and staggered on his weak legs. Malay Aman looked angrily at the Velirs and the others. Sichi! What are you doing? Throwing stones and dirt at the valiant Palyavatarayar? You call him a traitor? Even if my clan and I perish because of the Palyavatarayar's treachery. Let none of you blame him. Thanatakari! 
Come with me to the palace. Said. The crowd dispersed. Sundara Chola also passed away. Only the younger brother Kalantaka Kandar stood in front of Palyavatarayar. Brother. The emperor has so much faith in us. Can you betray him? Can we keep the female ghost who came to destroy his clan in our palace? He said. Immediately he also disappeared. Vandiyathevan, Kanamaran, and the other youths surrounded the elder Pavatarayar. Grey-bearded old man. Are you not only grey with desire? Are you ruined by female lust? What do the sixty-four sores on your body say now? Are they warts the prize of valour? Or worm wounds the wages of treachery? After hearing that, they laughed merrily. The Avenger tried to take out his costume sword to kill them. But the breaker is missing where it should be. At this time Kundave Prati came. She held her hand at the boys and stopped laughing. Bata! Don't mind their game talk. Chase away the viper in their palace. All will be well. She said. They disappeared. Women from the Palyavatare clan started coming. Ten people, a hundred people, a thousand people, six generations came and surrounded him. Oh! You must suffer this fate. You must inflict this great harm on our brave clan. Did we send children who were pregnant for ten months to the battlefield for the Chola country? Did they shed their blood and give their lives to find unparalleled glory for the Pavur dynasty? Did you get rid of all that in a second? They shouted. Girls! Shut up and go to that temple. I can't blame you! Said the reaper with difficulty. Then the women pointed in a direction. Yamad Harmaraja mounted on a buffalo cart and came with a felt and a pasak rope in his hand, he approached the reaper. As he was leaving, he said, Pahuvatare. Great honour to you. Didn't you help to take the life of Sundara Chola and the lives of two of his people in one day? I thank you. Said Yamad Harmarajan. No, no. I'm not helping you, I won't. I'll stop you. Yamane. Stop! Stop! screamed the reaper. He tried to rush to stop Yaman. But something stopped him. A great weight pressed upon him. He could not move from where he stood. See! It's exactly what we said. After saying that, the women of the Palyavatare clan cried out and lamented. Many of them wept with Opari. The sound of their cries grew louder by the minute. Palyavatarayar couldn't stand it. He tried to speak. But his speech was lost in the sound of crying. He couldn't bear to hear crying and moaning. He tried to cover his ears with both hands. But his hands also lay motionless. Couldn't pick them up. With a great effort he brushed his hands away. In that effort, his eyes also opened. I suddenly remembered. All the while he realized that what he experienced were hallucinations. But only Olak's voice was listening. He asked carefully. They are not women's voices, howl of foxes. While he was losing consciousness, he remembered the conversation that fell lightly in his ear. The old man is dead. Said a voice. Look well. The life of the scavenger is so bad that even Yama is afraid to come near him. Said another voice. Even if Yama is afraid, the fox is not afraid. Even if there is a little life left, the foxes will recover. When dawn comes, only the bones of the old man will be left. Good time you pushed the split hall. Otherwise I would have met that fate. The old man would have killed me. Where? Can we move the hall, let's see. After a while, the magician said. Not even a drop has moved. With one enemy's school army, we have planted Virakal for another. Enough laughing, come on. The boat is going to catch up and go down the river. Then we can't cross the castle. Remembering these words, Palyavatarayar examined his position. Yes, half of the school hall fell on him. Its great weight was crushing him. But able to breathe, how? Fortunately, the tree that fell with the mandapa landed on his shoulder and the mandapa fell on it. 
Marin then near the hall saved his life. Had the mandapam fallen directly on him, his chest and head would have been crushed. The old man marveled at the strength of his body. He realized that his life was not lost after carrying that big burden for so long. But can such a terrible life still be saved? Yes, you have to save somehow. We should save and prevent the danger that Chola clan was facing. If this is not prevented, his clan will surely suffer eternal punishment in this world. If he goes to heaven, all his ancestors will curse him there too. Therefore, regardless of suffering, this tree and hall should be thrown away and arise. Alas! I don't know how long we have been lying here lost in memory. Maybe there are tragedies that we want to prevent? Meanwhile the howling of the foxes was getting closer and closer. He heard the sound of foxes breathing near his head. Aha! Have these foxes gone mad after seeing the predator? Let's see a hand. The reaper began to see not only with one hand, but with both hands. Using all the strength left in his body, he tried to lift the tree that had fallen on him. As the tree rose little by little, the mandapam rock on top of it began to move and slide. Intermittent howls made the approaching foxes move away. After trying for what seemed like an age, the tree and mandapam rock that had been holding him down moved a little further and freed him. He lay down for a while because of the strain caused to him by the effort. He sighed heavily. He looked up at the sky. The sky was clear because it was close to the hall and many trees had fallen in the storm. Now the dark clouds no longer cover the sky. Innumerable stars like diamond grains were visible. Light clouds obscured them for a bit and then opened up and were rapidly dissipating. Suddenly a strange star appeared in the sky in the northern direction and caught his attention. Damn! Domekachua, which had such a long tail a few days ago, has now become so narrow? At one end of the star was a pale smoke about a foot long. What is the reason why the tail, which even ten days ago stretched across an angle of the sky, has become so narrow? He took his eyes off the sky and looked around. He saw that the foxes were not gone yet. There will be ten, twenty, fifty foxes. Their eyes were shining like flames in the darkness of the forest. It seems that they were waiting for when the old man was going to die. Let go. Let go. These foxes show so much respect to Palyavatareya. Suddenly the sky and the earth became light all over the forest. The scavenger's eyes lit up. It wasn't lightning, what else could it be? He looked at the sky. He saw a brightly shining torch traveling at an angle in the celestial circle. Its brightness dazzled his eyes. He closed his eyes for a moment and then opened them. The torch had dimmed, the light was getting less and less, suddenly it disappeared. It was dark as before. The farmer looked up at the sky again, wondering what this miracle could be. Short Dumekato looked at the place where he was just before. Missing it there. Aha! Dumakatu has fallen. What is the meaning of this? What is the effect of this? It is a sign that something catastrophic is going to happen in the world. A sign of an accident to someone from the royal family. When the comet disappears, anyone from the royal clan will die. This is a long-held belief among people. There are those who say that there is no such thing. Its truth and falsity will be known tomorrow. Tomorrow? No. You will know today. The sky below is white. It's going to be fun. Three horrific events are likely to take place in three places by tonight. Only we know the details of what will happen. We have the power to stop them. If he succeeds in preventing it, he has conquered even the omen that has fallen to Thamakthu. Otherwise, Pulavetare couldn't even think about it. Must be prevented. All the three belonging to the Chola clan should be saved. His first duty, most important duty is to save Aditha Kari Kalan. If an accident happens to him, the blame falls squarely on his head. Therefore, you should immediately go to Katapur beyond Kala Dam. Before that, it is better to go to Gudanta and send a warning to Tanjore and Naga. And then, like fate, it goes away. That's all they can do. The scavenger tried to get up. 
The whole body ached. The place where the tree had fallen caused unbearable pain in the chest. A leg appeared to be broken. There were various injuries all over Thagam. The brave old man ignored all of them. He gritted his teeth and made a great effort to stand up, he looked around. Fortunately, the foxes waiting for his death had fled by then. When Domakata fell, they were scared and ran away after seeing the flood of light. He set out in a certain direction in which direction the city of Kyudenteia might be. He planted his feet firmly and started walking. The storm blew and trees fell all the way. It was a flooded forest due to heavy rains and landslides. Heedless of all these disturbances, the destroyer walked on. The turmoil of the soul made one forget all the troubles of the body. But time went on. He approached the town of Kyudentai about two hours after dawn. He did not want to go to Madhya Pradesh of that city. If you see him in this sphere, people will come and surround him. They ask what, what? He will not be able to do what he wanted to do quickly and efficiently. Therefore, at the edge of the city, where there is no crowd, someone should be caught and sent to Tanjore and Naga. Then earn a vehicle and leave for Katapur. Yes, he remembered the astrologer near the goddess Durga's temple, it is private territory and there are no other houses in the neighborhood. An astrologer is a suitable person, a man of good nature. Belongs to the royal family and the prime minister. So what? Anyone can do this. He will do it even more enthusiastically because he belongs to the royal family. Aha! Whether the astrologer really knows astrology and whether there is truth in astrology can be tested at this time. Palyavetarayar approached the Amon temple and the astrologer's house. A huge tall tree in front of the temple was broken in the storm. At first it caught his attention. Next his gaze fell on the two horse-locked chariot standing next to the temple. It is a chariot of strange structure. The top of the chariot was shaped like a stream. If they have to travel in a hurry during floods, they use these types of chariots. When crossing large rivers, if the river suddenly floods, the stream can be removed from the chariot alone, and if the horses are untied, they will swim to the shore. Those who came in the chariot could push the stream and reach the shore. Such chariots are rare in the Chola country. Whose chariot will this be? The palace should be a chariot, or it should be the first minister's chariot. It seems that those who came here are now listening to astrology in the astrologer's house. Who will they be? May I ask the charioteer? Don't. He will go even if he is horrified to see him. It is better to enter the astrologer's house and have a look. If whoever is there asks and buys this chariot, won't it be convenient to go back to Kadampur? When Pula Vetarayar came to the astrologer's door, he heard female voices inside. Tossed it to the old man. Whose voice? Why? Aren't younger brats like squat voices? Why did she come here? At this time, should I come? The person who thought this way at first changed his mind immediately. So, if it's a younger brat, it's going very well. It was as if the fruit slipped and fell into the milk. If Kundeva puts the matter in Devi's ear, it is as if his burden is lifted. If her father and brother were specifically told about the possible danger, then the shrewd girl would take precautions before she had to. Then he can return to Katapur in peace. Isn't there his most important duty? When the astrologer entered the door of the astrologer's house, he was stopped by the same watchman we had seen earlier, the astrologer's disciple. He couldn't recognize him in the Golam where Palyavatarayar was then. Stop! He stopped by saying that in a raspy voice. Palyavatarayar made a huff once and grabbed him by the neck and pushed him. The disciple fell down on the street with a small whip. Palyavatarayar entered the astrologer's house shaking the earth like a temple. 